of this here in that he gets killed on the very day where you're supposed to be swearing in new prime minister and the guy who he has to leave, guess what? He's not the one in charge. Mm. 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 Roland, my heart goes out to the people of Haiti. Uh, Haiti is a beautiful country and a strong country and one with many resources. You know, Faraji said, what is stopping us from providing the support that Haiti actually needs? I think the number one issue is the narrative, the narrative that's been told about Haiti for years, for years yep. of what it's Haiti mild. is supposed to be or how Haiti, a third world country, it is the S-hole country heard from Trump himself, the, our prior president, unfortunately. So I think that is the number one problem, is the narrative that's been sold for the history of Haiti. That is what's been stopping Haiti from receiving the help that it needs. And in addition to that is that countries that want to provide help and so-called call themselves helping Haiti, what is it that they want in return? Do they mm -hmm. want to overtake the country? Because that's exactly what the ambassador was saying about these NGOs, these non-government organizations that, yes, they're coming into Haiti supposedly helping out, but they're making the situation much worse. So the problem is so big. I don't know how do you get a handle of the problem because it's just that it's a bad narrative for years. And then you're talking about everyone who wants to have their hand in a pot, but not for good intention. And what you have here, Cleo, are people still demanding uh, for free and fair elections. While all of this is happening, all of the, you're dealing with the gangs, you're dealing with the kidnappings. At the end of the day, what you're dealing with, people uh, who are starving, people who want yes. peace, people who want a way forward. Cleo, final comment. Roland, let's put this in context. Way back during the presidency of Thomas Jefferson, when the coup occurred or and the revolution occurred in Haiti, he made sure and had his troops and his people make sure that Amer Africans in the United States did not know about it, because hey. they did not they did not want Africans to know that black folks won somewhere. Even the American media and even Hollywood will not make a film unless it's a spaceship and it make, which makes it clearly science fiction. There are some real facts of black triumph against white supremacy mythology in the world, and they will not allow that to occur. For example, and I'm going to get to your question, but I want people to hear context. There's Danny Glover and Gibson. What's his first name? Um, the, the act, Mel Gibson. Gibson. Yeah, Danny Glover. Mel Gibson. Danny Glover mm -hmm. and Mel Gibson mm -hmm. did a very successful mm -hmm. franchise, Lethal Weapon. And they both had mm -hmm. the same level of gravitas and theory in Hollywood. However, Gibson made a movie about a Scottish freedom fighter. I forgot the name of the movie now. Danny Glover tried to make an epic film about Toussaint's overture in the... In mm -hmm. the um, the event in Haiti, and they would not, Hollywood would not support him because there are no white heroes in the story of T Toussaint and Dessalines out in Haiti. So we are still dealing with the legacy of Thomas Jefferson, who said, do not tell them black folks about Haiti. Make sure they think that they're voodoo crazy people, that they're dirty, dumb, and they're stupid, and they're backwards. If they hear about them at all, make sure there's a negative perspective. Faraje, I just met your name. I hope I got your name correct. Correct. That's Faraje. You said, That's it. You, you said, what's stopping us? What's stopping us is that we're successfully trained, in most cases, to be white supremacy mythologists, not black hey. people affirmationists. So hey. we don't even love Haiti. I love Haiti. That's why I go there all the time. I go to Port-au-Prince and to Cape Haitian and been to the Citadel. You black folks need to find out about the Citadel. You probably don't even know what I'm talking about. I don't, want, I don't mean to be presumptuous. When I mentioned the Citadel in northern Haiti, no, no, nobody even knows what I'm talking about. And those Haitians had it going on. They understood the power of black unity and black people coming together for each other against white supremacy, and they were successful. It's a success story that this country does not want us to know about because they don't even want us to step up successfully without their contamination against white supremacy. So what we have to do, Roland, is... It's like everything else. It's like, frankly, your show is a show about the fact that we have to do it ourselves. No one's going to do it for us. White folks didn't give mm -hmm. you no building blocks to build Roland Martin Unfiltered. You built it. Mm -hmm. And then black people who you support and know got some sense have been involved in supporting the existence of your show because it's extremely important. Haiti needs the same kind of rescue. 
It needs the black nation, like Faraje has said, in terms of global thinking, to come together and say, look, we have a lot, to, we have a lot of work to do, but Haiti is sacred. Haiti is our people who actually fought. When I was in high school, in junior high school, I was told down that Napoleon was undefeated. I don't know if your high school told that lie, but my junior high school, <laughs> my high school said that Napoleon was so relevant in the history of the world because he was undefeated. That's not true. Two brothers, Dessalines and Toussaint Overture, defeated him when he came over there with his troops to try to keep slavery going. But we don't know about that. We don't know about the Citadel. We don't know about Henri Christopher, who was a king after the revolt. If we knew our history and fell back in love with ourselves and what we actually deserve to have, is, which is a unified, sane people, we would know who Haiti was and we'd be insulted by what's happening in Haiti. Because whether it's an assassination, just like with Malcolm X, whether it's an assassinating at black hands or not, the larger context of violence, dysfunction, and chaos is because of the infiltration of white supremacy in all these spaces to keep things unstable so it can never be powerful enough to successfully resist them. Them meaning the system, the system of white supremacy. So I just hope that people watching this show do their research, understand that what that Haiti is three hours from this country, and the United States is in a position to do some work there to help it, but they're too racist and white supremacists to do it. Uh, and that includes that includes the current administration and all the previous administrations. All right, clear and, even, and even the impotence of the Bl Congressional Black Caucus to make potent decisions mm -hmm. is, a subs is a consequence of the invasion of white supremacy in the black psyche, and we got to work on that more. All right, Cleo, Cleo Monago, we surely appreciate it. Thanks a lot. No problem. All right, folks, got to go to a break. When we come back, we'll talk about where's our money segment. TikTok, a, tic a black TikToker breaks down the economic racism on that particular app. Also, a white woman in Indiana terrorizes black school children. Now, black and white folks are fighting back. They want her arrested. We'll discuss all of that next on Roller Martin Unfiltered. White supremacy ain't just about hurting black folk. Right. You gotta deal with it. It's injustice. It's wrong. I do feel like in this generation, we've got to do more around being intentional and resolving conflict You and I have always agreed. Yeah. But we agree on the big piece. Yeah. Our conflict is not about destruction. Conflict's gonna happen. Hello, I'm Nina Turner. My grandmother used to say, all you need in life are three bones. The wishbone to keep you dreaming, the jawbone to help you speak truth to power, and the backbone to keep you standing through it all. I'm running for Congress because you deserve a leader who will stand up fearlessly on your behalf. Together, we will deliver Medicare for all. Good jobs that pay a living wage and bold justice reform. I'm Nina Turner, and I approve this message. Before Till's murder, we saw struggle for civil rights as something grown-ups did. I feel that the generations before us have offered a, a lot of instruction. Organizing is really one of the only things that gives me the sanity and makes me feel purposeful. When Emmett Till was murdered, yeah. that's what attracted our attention. Hey, what's up? This is Marlon Wayans. No, it's not Kenan. No, or as some of y'all say, Klignan. No, it's not Damien. It's really, da and it's not Damien, because I do not have a bald head. Um, it's one of the Wayans. It's not Winans, uh, because they have been coming up to go, hey, how you doing? I love the Winans. There's no BB and no CC in this family. There's Kiki and Damon. So I am one of them Wayans uh, brothers, or as you may want to call fraternity population. Uh, there's the Chinese, and then there's the Wayans. We, there's so many of us. Seven Wayans was born during this drop. So you are watching my man, Roland Martin, who uh, really uh, is swagged out. I want to give a big shout out to my man, Roland Martin, because he inspired the generation. He's the one that got Al Sharpton in the gym doing selfies. 
he got up. <laughs> and Reverend Al was like, oh, I see Roland trying to look like he got a little two-pack. I'm going to get him one better. He's the one that got Al doing the one-handed almost push-up <laughs> on the desk. <laughs> So Roland Martin is the inspiration behind that. So be sure to <laughs> tune in and watch. Roland Martin Unfiltered. Folks, don't forget, you want to look at uh, the last two weekends of the Essence Festival, the virtual festival. Simply go to Essence.com or EssenceStudios.com. Uh, we truly really appreciate Coca-Cola uh, partnering with us uh, on that. All right, folks, uh, in Ohio, the state Supreme Court, they rejected uh, an appeal from the white officer who fatally shot 12-year-old Tamir Rice in 2014. In April, the Cleveland Police Patrolman's Association filed the appeal on behalf of Timothy Lohman, requesting his job back. Loman was a rookie in 2014 when he responded to a call of someone waving a gun around. That someone was Rice, who Loman shot within seconds of arriving on the scene. Loman was fired in 2017 for submitting false information on his initial job application and not for his, invo and not for his involvement in Rice's killing. Earlier this year, an Ohio appellate court dismissed Loman's appeal. In December, a grand jury declined to indict Loman for the shooting and declined to bring federal charges against him. Rice's family has requested the Department of Justice to reopen the investigation into Tamir Rice's death. All right, folks, uh, we uh, talk about, of course, uh, our uh, Where's Our Money segment. Uh, and uh, we should let's roll that. We're supposed to play that. We've been frozen out. Facing an extinction level event. We don't fight this fight right now. You're not going to have black on. We've been telling y'all about uh, how we as African Americans are consistently screwed when it comes to the advertising industry. Well, that includes TikTok. Now, you also know that right now you got black TikTokers are actually boycotting the app because they say they aren't being sufficiently paid for the dances that they create where other people are making lots of money. Well, one TikToker named Ziggy Tyler literally did a demonstration showing you how black people are getting screwed on TikTok economically. He dropped two videos. Watch this. I'm not going to be overly dramatic. I'm going to cut to the chase because I am not feeling well today. I said I was going to give you more about um, what was going on yesterday. Um, and I'm very emotional because I lost a friend last night. Um, so... Here's why I'm frustrated. So if I go into the creator marketplace and I put supporting white supremacy and I hit accept, it's okay. And it lets me have my asking rate at $500. White supremacy, but God forbid, let me put Black Lives Matter on there. Watch, it says it's a threat. Boom, inappropriate content. Can't say that. I cannot say black people. This is my screen recording. And this is why I'm pissed the fuck off. We're tired. We're tired. Okay, black success, boom, inappropriate content. Anything black related is inappropriate content. But let me, black, can't say it. Let's take that out of the equation. Supporting white success. The same adjectives I was using to describe us on this app, it's allowed. It's allowed. White voices, accepted, $500. Um, Pro-white, accepted, $500. But let me say pro-black, a threat.
and y'all thought I was gonna stop, here's the next part. Yeah, I'm fed up. I'm tired. I am a Neil. You can see it. Boom. Accepted. Fine. No issue. Let me delete it. I can say I'm anti. I'm not even gonna say the word out loud because it irks me. Anti. Boom. Right here. You see it. Accepted. God forbid. I type this in. Let me get rid of that. Let me say word of the day. I'm a black man. What you think is gonna say? Threat. I'm done. Hmm. We tried to get uh, Ziggy, uh, Ziggy Tyler on the show, uh, was unable to do so. But, but that shows you right there, uh, Bernardo, what's going on here. You're a lawyer. I think TikTok might need to be sued. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he literally shows you in real time how the app works. If you put this in, what immediately comes up. That's crazy. So TikTok, what you got to say? What's the response? <laughs> Are you getting that ready for us? <laughs> you know, maybe tomorrow? Because <laughs> obviously this is going viral, and especially now that it's on your show, Roland, thank you for bringing that up to us and bringing that out, out to our community for us to know, because I have been getting uh, texts about it as well as notifications about it. But uh, I didn't exactly see the video till now. So good for Ziggy. Good for Ziggy for putting himself out there and actually showing out TikTok for what it is. However, Roland, I'm going to tell you this. It's going to be kind of hard to sue TikTok. Why? Because TikTok is a private organization. It's exactly. not a, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's not a public organization. So unfortunately, it's much easier when you're dealing with a public organization that is getting some kind of funding or operating in some kind of way from the federal government or the state government because the United States Constitution applies, Right. So when you're talking about a private organization, though, that's receiving their own funding or bringing up their own funding, it is very difficult to sue a private organization for having parameters such as this. But so but, but that doesn't no, 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 mean. No, no, but, but here's the deal, though. But, but here's the deal. Uh -huh. We've seen we've seen racial discrimination lawsuits against other even publicly traded companies or even private companies. So. So if, if, if so, he, what he's demonstrating is that even just the use of the word black and showing that if you put white supremacy in, you can get paid, but Black Lives Matter, objectionable content. <laughs> what I'm curious to do, and now I'm, I'm, I'm thinking now a lot, is that what if you can do a lawsuit in terms of TikTok supporting language that can lead to a riot, lead to an uprise. Because when you're talking about using the word of white supremacy, when you're talking about uh, speaking about anti-Semitism, um, can we consider that and argue that we're, TikTok is technically supporting some kind of riot? So does the First Amendment apply to it. Can we tie that, for example, similar to the riot and the overtake and the siege that took place at Washington, D.C. earlier this year? So now I'm like, wait, maybe we have something. We're going to have to be creative about it. Do you think it's going to move in any way quickly? No. What makes companies change quickly is the rise in social media, how we start boycotting it. You know, unfortunately, the best penalty in a lot of these cases is not even taking it to court, but rather blasting these companies on social media and getting a rise out of the entire community and have them face the backlash. Kelly. So uh, just to piggyback off her point as to whether there can be a lawsuit I mean, and, and you know this being a lawyer, uh, and, and I'm technically a lawyer, but I don't practice, anything can be a lawsuit, right? But the fact of the matter is the threshold uh, for hate speech or to uh, prove that something was incited by way of speech, you know, that threshold is pretty high. It's damn near strict scrutiny. So for, I, I don't know how viable that case would be if brought to court just by way of you know, proof that TikTok is allowing the word white instead of black. It would have to be very 
blatant that they helped incite the riot, right? But um, to your point about TikTok being racist, well, frankly, all of these social media uh, apps and platforms have some uh, level of racism to it. Like on, on Facebook, I know that they are going back years to find content from creators that are, you know, on the rise who are either black or brown or other people of color going back years into their profiles just to pull out a word that has absolutely no context to it, but because all of a sudden that word is flagged, now they are not just flagged, but some of uh, the people that I've seen go through this, they, they go to Facebook jail for 30 days <laughs> or for three months because of something that happened or was commented on three years ago. Um, but you can, you see uh, my white counterparts can say whatever they want and the algorithm you know, passes them by, similar to what you just saw on the TikTok. I've personally gone through things on Instagram when I was trying to post things uh, last year regarding the election and, you know, bringing awareness to it. Instagram wasn't having it, but I was seeing a lot of conservative stuff getting, um, you know, slipped through the cracks. So it, it's not just a TikTok issue. It is a social media platform issue. But TikTokers are very uh, vocal, a lot more vocal about it. Um, I don't know if anybody heard about the uh, the black create the black uh, content creator uh, faux bo mm -hmm. boycott a couple weeks ago with Meg The Stallion uh, song mm -hmm. and how they just refused to create any content to that song because white people were stealing it. It's because the algorithms are pushing white people to the front on content that black people created. So you'll see the white people's content first, even though the black creator made it first and they go viral and they get the money from advertisers and the like and black people, their, their IP is just gone. So it's a, mm. it's a larger issue than TikTok for sure. Uh, Faraji. Real quick, um, Mutule uh, Nkande, she's the CEO of AI for the People. You can find her on Twitter. But essentially, a nonprofit communications agency that's fighting for racial justice in tech. And one of the things that she said about TikTok is that they had issues last year with uh, black content creators and, and, and how black content creators were expressing themselves. We got to know and recognize. Uh, just like Kelly said, that there are power in numbers. There are there are thousands of black content creators on TikTok. You don't need to have thousands of people to make a change. You could just get a couple of voices. Uh, the, the, the issue becomes whether we want to uh, move away from that platform to create new platforms. Now, I know that there are some folks that out there that said, look, here, yeah, let's do that, let's do that. But the issue is, the general public. How much are we willing to get off of the mainstream and to create some alternative spaces that black folks will be uh, seen as equitable and that we can get our voices out there? Same way we do, we're here on RMU. You know what I mean? Instead of you just saying, oh, well, I just listen to CNN and everything, subscribe and, and make sure that you put your, 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 your investment into spaces like Roland Martin there has to be that same level of conversation. And I think that we need to bring those uh, folks from AI for the people and other folks who are already involved in tech uh, equity, that we bring them to the table and have those conversations and y'all tell us, what do we need to do? Because at this point, folks are just looking at TikTok for the latest dance trend and, and changing clothes craze. Well, at this point, we need to make some, we need to make some changes. Well, and that's why uh, one of the things that uh, I have been uh, saying to people uh, is to uh, download this app right here, Fanbase. We had Isaac Hayes III uh, on the show. Uh, this is a black-owned, black-created social media app that actually allows for you to get paid, meaning the people who watch your videos, they can pay you directly. And so, folks, uh, if you go to uh, Fanbase, I'm actually on Fanbase. Uh, support support fan base a, as well, uh, and so uh, you you know we should blow this up. We make let me real clear. We make go ahead and leave it up. We make a lot of other people rich. <coughs> we Come make on. other people billionaires. We make other folks 
uh, mega successful. Clubhouse, black folks made that thing hot. Within nine months, they had a $4 billion valuation on it. Uh, there's no reason fan base right now doesn't have a million, two million, five million users. That's, that's what should be happening. And so every one of us should be doing that. And so I even posted, I said, hey, if, you, if you're a black TikToker, you know what? Don't put your damn videos on TikTok. Put your videos on Fanbase and tell all of your followers to come to Fanbase as well. Black on, black control, I'm saying. So, folks, be sure to, uh, to download it. All right. Y'all know what time it is. No charcoal girls are allowed. I'm not a new... Oh, why? I got you, bro. Yeah, um, illegally selling water without a permit? On my property. On my property. Whoa! Hey! Don't live here. I'm All right, folks, this crazy ass white lady had the nerve to threaten some black kids at a playground by using racial slurs and literally chasing them around with a knife. Now that racist has gone viral and there's a hashtag called Arrest Tara Rollin. Check this out. Last week, I told y'all about a woman named Tara Rowling terrorizing children by chasing them with a knife, yelling racial slurs on school property. That's all I knew then. That's changed. Tara couldn't catch these kids. She needed backup. D calls 911. Guess it's a crime to be a black child in Fort Wayne because they took Tara's side of the story and they took one of those children and put them in the back of the cruise. Not that that was good enough for them. They decided to threaten him with detention center and they didn't record any of it. Fort Wayne Police Department has been telling the advocacy group, the change maker, that they've had someone on the case for a while now. That's not true at all. Matter of fact, nobody went on the case until the day after I posted my video. The parents have come forward. The tape has been seen. The media is silent. The school system won't make a statement. And the police aren't doing shit about it. I need y'all to make some noise. The image above me is everything that you can do to make some noise and calling for the arrest immediately of Tara Rowling. It feels like a damn good day to get some justice. Let's make some noise. Well, after that video went viral, the social media user who posted it released this follow-up video. All right, that was one there. So, so basically what they're trying to do is that they, they really want people, uh, they, they, they really pressure the Fort Wayne, Indiana folks to get involved. They released a call of action for the rest of, uh, of Tara. Joining us right now is Positive AF, Alicia Rausch and uh, Delana uh, Sanders, co-founders of Changemakers Fort Wayne. How y'all doing? Good. How are you? All right. Glad uh, glad to have uh, all of you here. So, all right. So, 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 what has happened? What has happened? Uh, what has been the response? Uh, is the city of Fort Wayne responding? 
Uh, no. For no. Wayne is barely responding. Our friend down there, Positive AF, actually helped us uh, engage the audience in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, you know, Fort Wayne has been known uh, as a city to be sleep and very complacent places. Um, and we knew that when we found out about this case. And so we knew that we would have to uh, gather the army and the community outside of the city. And that's exactly what we did. We put several influencers, uh, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, just to see who's like-minded and who is actually uh, brave enough to tackle this issue and speak about this issue. And Positive AF answered the call. So when uh, so when so when you put when you put this video out calling for the uh, the call to action, uh, you made it perfectly clear. You said, "Hey, uh, let's get this thing going." Um, have folks been blowing your phone up? Uh, have how people have been stepping in? Yeah, absolutely. People have been blowing it up. Uh, I think when we started the hashtag, we were at two uses of the hashtag of arrest terror rolling. And now I think we're over 1.2, 1.3 million. So when I said in the video, make some noise, people are definitely making the noise. I've seen a, I've seen a Fort Wayne be tagged on Twitter. I've seen it reposted on Facebook, Instagram. We're definitely making noise. Matter of fact, on one of our call to action uh, promos, there was a phone number to call the lead detective on this case. And people blew up his phone number so much, he actually had it disconnected. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, definitely shows where Fort Wayne stands as far as terror rolling is concerned. Well, we have a replacement phone number for everyone, and we put that out as well. So that one is shut off, but we have a new one. We're going to call the chief of police. So the Perfect. fact the, the fact that she terrorized these folks and nothing has been done so far is crazy to me. Yeah. It's crazy, yeah. but it's not so Go ahead. Yeah, the, the thing is, from the protests in the, in the summer, uh, last summer in this city, uh, we're not surprised by the way that the police has responded. The mayor here uh, actually put together a uh, commission that was supposed to address the, the relationship between the uh, Fort Wayne Police Department and the community, which was very uh, volatile. It was, it was a dangerous uh, relationship just because there was no trust. And there was also a lot of implicit bias. There's a racist culture uh, on that department. And we're seeing that actually play out uh, in this case because they are dragging their feet. They're saying that they need more and more and more. And we actually go out and go fishing for more, bring it back to them. And then they say they need something else. The prosecutor hasn't even, it hasn't even touched the prosecutor's desk. Uh, I talked to the uh, uh, chief of police office today and they said well we're going to need you all to give us more time and we told them that we've given you guys two months already she should have been arrested as soon as they found out about this which was may 29th may 29th and they didn't they have not done anything and still as of this morning don't plan to do anything mm, mm. What, what what else do y'all want uh the public to do are you planning um any a public protest, anything along those lines? Well, yeah, we're definitely going to move forward with uh, public protest. Um, you know, if we don't, if we don't see the results that we want, you know, we want her arrested. She needs to be charged with criminal recklessness, uh, intent to harm a minor. There, you know, we can't let something like this go in our community. Um, we just had a, a few months back, we had uh, three black men, black boys, actually, 19, 18 year old boys shot and two of them were killed by a white man. Um, they were literally hunted down in this city. And then we have this happen. So it seems like there's a pattern and they're getting comfortable with doing these things. And so we need to stand up and make sure that she's held accountable for her actions. Um, it's not okay for an adult to chase a child in a public park or on, on school property no matter with a what. knife. It doesn't matter what happened before. It doesn't matter what happened after. Um, 
it's it's illegal. If it's it a had, felony. If it had been Daylon Saunders or Alicia Roush that had that knife in their hands chasing little white kids, we would have been arrested. Matter of fact, if we were chasing little black kids, we would have been arrested as well. And so the system is actually protecting Tara Rowling, and she knew that she was going to be protected, which is why she was so comfortable mm -hmm. doing that to black kids while calling them the N-word. So moving forward, they have a limited amount of time to address this situation. We're not going to give them that date, Roland. We're not going to give them that date, but they have a limited amount of time, which we told them today. But we want to rally the troops. Everybody in Fort Wayne, Indiana, everyone in the surrounding cities in Fort Wayne, Indiana, we want you all to be ready. Just Activist. like that video... Just like that video that you guys saw going around. I'm not, I don't remember what city that was, Roland, but you guys just talked about it, where the city came out and went to that man's address. That's the energy that we need in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So we're putting everybody on notice that we want you all to be ready when we put out that call to go to the police station or if we got to go to the chief's house, we're going to protest there. So we want you all to continue in the meantime. What, look at the graphic. We want you guys to call the chief of police office is there. We want you guys to email and call the prosecutor office, uh, the prosecutor's office. Keep on with the action items. They have a very limited time, guys. And then we're going to have to turn make a move. We will. Positive, so Carter, positive AF, your final comment. Yeah, I just want to say uh, actually two things. One thing about the, the, the segment you had before about Ziggy. Uh, that's nothing new. As far as black creators on TikTok, they are definitely suppressed. Uh, and as far as Ziggy personally, I don't know him, but I couldn't even follow him. Once he posted his videos, you couldn't duet, mm. you couldn't stitch, you couldn't comment half the time, and you couldn't follow him as well. Uh, and as far as Tara Rowling is concerned, TikTok currently has me on a ban because I posted a video about a sexual offender that was on their app that's been banned several times. As soon as that ban comes up, if nothing's been done with Tara Rowling, we're going in again. We're just going to keep making noise until Fort Wayne does anything. Because as far as I can see it, they're not doing anything at all to solve this well, problem. Well, uh, what you can also do is you can also just send us a video because uh, we're on TikTok, Roland Martin Unfiltered. So, hell, we can post it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'll get something. Hey. I'll send it right. That's how we do it. All right, folks, hey. I appreciate it. Uh, let us know how this thing uh, ends up. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. So All right. great, great work. Thanks a lot. All right, folks, going to a break. When we come back, uh, Essence Festival, the second weekend, uh, took place uh, last weekend. We'll talk with one of the editors about that and show you also some of what took place for our recap of the 2021 Virtual Essence Festival. That is next on Roller Martin Unfiltered. When you study the music, yeah. you get black history by default. And so no, no other craft could carry as many words as rap music. I try to intertwine that and make that create the, whatever I'm supposed to send out to the universe. A rapper, it, you know, for the longest period of time has gone through phases. I love the word. I hate, I hate what it's become, you know, and in, in to this generation, the way they visualize it. It's narrative kind of like has gotten away and spun away from, I guess, the ascension of black people. Black women have always been essential. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. how are you going to pay us like that? And it's not just the, the salary. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a whole number of issues that have to support us as women. Yeah. But that's what we deserve. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have to beg anybody for that. And I think that we are trying to do our best as a generation to honor the fact that we didn't come here alone and we didn't come here by accident. I always say every generation has to define for itself yeah. what it means to move the needle forward. Mm -hmm. I'm Chrisette Michelle. Hi, I'm Chaley Rose, and you're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered.
All right, fam! Fam, fam! If y'all want to watch the 2021 uh, Essence Virtual Live Loud Experience, go to EssenceStudios.com or Essence.com. Uh, folks, there were a lot of star-studded performances and guest appearances, including India Ari, uh, Ray, Lisa Ray, Fat Joe, Buster Rhymes, Wele, and many more. Here is a recap of this weekend. You're actually about to get a scoop, because I've never really talked to anybody really about my skin story, but I have an interesting one. Okay. Because when you said my skin looked good and glowing and clear, this has been a long journey to get to this point with me and my skin. When I was young, I had very, very, very troubled skin. I would say my skin stayed troubled until I was probably 19. And so what I learned as I got older was that I had allergies that I didn't know I had. I was eating what everybody else ate, but it was affecting my body different than it affected everyone else because I'm hypersensitive. Get you somebody that can do both. My mom loved makeup and I would just always look at her in the mirror and be like, wow, you know what I'm saying? And her her sisters and stuff and her sisters that have eyes like me, I would feel like, oh, when I get older, I'm gonna wear green. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna put those glasses on too, and I'm gonna wear wigs too. And look, look at, look at me now. Look at me. Here you are. The I, face is deep. Like it's Claudia, cool. mm -hmm. And like what Claudia said, the older that you get, the more I like the fresh face look. We did a show of Cocktails with Queens uh, with a spa face, fresh face, and we all looked incredible. Essence Festival. I've been waiting my whole life for this. I go by the name of Fat Joe. Let's get it. Got to do, got to do with it, baby. It hits. Come on. Got to do, got to do with it, baby. So what you say, yo? Silly with the nine milli, what the dilly, yo? When I be on the mic, yes, I do my duty, yo. I run up in the club like we're in the studio. You don't want to violate, nigga, really, you truly, yo. My lame dog, nigga, named Julio. He moody, yo. Like my nigga did a sloppy with the tulio. yo. Uh-huh. Bitch, get the deck. Act fruity, yo. X stack. Look at Sonny, she got a little cutie, yo. The way she shake it, baby, wanna get off in the booty, yo. Top is shit. This is a bang and misses and videos. Hey! I'm with my freak like we up in the freak show. And then we hit you with the shit, make you feel it all in your toes. Hey, Hot shit, huh. got on my people and wet clothes. Now style up my metaphors when I form my label flow. And if you don't know, you fucking with hey. me. Plan, bro. I want to thank everybody out there for representing, showing love. It's all love, and it's always going to be love. All the fans out there, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Y'all make some noise for Wale, Fat Joe, Ray Sherman, Buster Rhymes. Come on, legendary. Peace and love. Bless up. That's right, the Aston Festival of culture. We the biggest. All right, joining us right now is Essence Entertainment Editor, Brandy Victorian. Brandy, how you doing? All right, I, I said again, I wanna make sure all of y'all can hear you. Oh, can you hear me? How there you we doing? go, there we go, all right then. So uh, certainly uh, being virtual is uh, a lot different from all of the in-person energy uh, and excitement of New Orleans. Uh, annually, 400 plus thousand people travel to the city. Uh, any, in, any preliminary numbers in terms of uh, how y'all did in terms of viewership over the, over the two weekends? No, we're still counting our numbers because the streams are still coming in. The great thing about having a hybrid virtual festival is that people are still streaming now. So this happened over two weekends, uh, the 25th through the 27th and the 2nd through the 4th this past weekend. Uh, but people are still streaming on Essence.com and EssenceStudios.com, so we don't have final numbers just yet. 
So there were a lot of obviously moving parts here uh, to put uh, all of this together. Uh, and so uh, how many different venues were, were things shot in different cities? Three different venues in New Orleans alone, or four actually, in New Orleans alone. We were at um, Crescent Park and, and Wellesley Barrow Stadium doing our concerts, having our panel conversations. And that was a really amazing experience because residents of New Orleans could be live for those live to tape activations there. So that was a really special way to just thank them for letting us come to their city every year, take over year after year um, there. And then we also taped you know, Jasmine Sullivan, our headliner, we had her in Philly, um, you know, DJ Khaled in LA. And so we had, you know, things going on in every single city, which is what you can do when it's virtual um, for this amazing experience that we had online. So, um, but now you had it on SS.com, SSStudios.com, but then you, did you also, was it also on your Facebook page, YouTube channel, you know, how many different platforms uh, were you on? Yes, uh, SS.com, SSStudios.com, Facebook as well, Instagram. You know, we had our Instagram uh, live with verses that happened this past Thursday, Bobby Brown and Keith Sweat, which is an amazing experience um, that we have. And then Twitter. So we had watch parties uh, this past weekend where you could see uh, DJ Callen and all his friends there. So all our social networks and our sites. Um, there was, now in terms of curating all of this, uh, that was also, uh, that also, that had to be a challenge. Huge undertaking, you know. Uh, shout out to our team. You know, last year, obviously, we had to pivot to be fully virtual uh, because of the pandemic. And this year, you know, we are still in a pandemic. Things are opening up um, a bit. And so that's why we were able to do some of those live activations um, on the ground. But the great thing about virtual, again, everyone, no matter where they were, um, could experience the festival and they can keep experiencing um, it now. And so it, it was a lot of moving parts, as you said. Um, but we're so grateful to the talent also who was just excited about getting back out there excited to be performing again um, and just work with us to to have a safe experience but an amazing dynamic experience uh, and obviously uh, everyone is thinking that uh, you're gonna be back in New Orleans for 2022 mm -hmm. uh, has yeah. that decision actually been made or is it still gonna be driven by uh, COVID yeah, we, you know, we want to keep everyone safe as a priority. So we're definitely going to, you know, keep waiting out, see how things happen um, with COVID just to make sure, you know, we're taking care of everyone. But obviously the hope is that we can be back in New Orleans with everyone um, in the city like we've been for the past 27 years. And so in, ter in terms of in terms of uh, how you also uh, are now going not going to cu curate the content, uh, you know, uh, you certainly posted clips and things along those lines on, on your different platforms. Uh, but uh, are, are y'all going to be doing uh, any restreaming or is it simply all going to be uh, VOD? Yes, uh, we have VOD, and then um, the streams are now on, again, EssenceFestival.com. Uh, you can watch. We have Beauty Carnival. We have Wellness House. We have the Gospel Celebration. We have the Wealth and Power stage, and so whatever you're interested in, um, you know, we've had Michelle Williams, the Afro Minimalist, uh, all the Adrian Bailon, all these great uh, speakers come out, and so if you go to EssenceFestival.com, you can click on those different conversations, stream it now, um, and, and tap into whatever interests you as well as the concerts. Uh, so, and you could see those full performances there as well. Um, and uh, so one of the things that, so uh, out of all different things that uh, both weekends, yeah, I'm gonna actually put you on the spot. Which was, a be <laughs> which was a better weekend, the first or the second? Oh no. Yep, yep, sorry, <laughs> suck it up, gotta answer. <laughs> they were different, you know. Nah, I nah, okay, okay, go ahead. But we have to shout out, I mean, our headliner, Jasmine Sullivan. You know, she's an amazing vocalist. She's our headliner this year. She's also our cover star for our July, August issue. And we actually had a special um, New Orleans to L.A. watch party uh, during BET weekend. And audiences were glued. You know, we're in person, but we're watching our screen and watching her sing. So I have to give my props to Jasmine uh, there. But DJ Khaled and his friends did his thing this past weekend, too. So, so that's a tough one. <laughs> All right, then. Well, look, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, we we hope, hopefully we did our part for the last three weeks, uh, partnering with Coca-Cola, uh, promoting yeah. it every single day, pushing people uh, to check it out. Uh, and so uh, hopefully the numbers were through the roof. And uh, I can't wait for us to be back uh, in New Orleans because uh, we, uh, we dipped into uh, our personal archives, pulling out a whole bunch of stuff from the past decade, uh, different yeah. uh, Essence Festival moments.
Yes, we can't wait to see you on the ground either. <laughs> All right. Uh, Brandon Victorian, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Take care. All right. Thank you so very much. Uh, folks, I think we have, do we have another Essence throwback? All right. Roll it. All right, folks, uh, and so we've got, like, y'all, we got so much stuff. We're going to actually be sharing more of our content uh, over the, uh, the next uh, couple of days. So we're going to, we'll uh, do it through Friday. Uh, folks, uh, some sad news. Uh, yesterday, we got word that actress uh, Suzanne Douglas, you might remember her from uh, the show Parenthood with Robert Townsend, also starred in the Inkwell and how Stella got her groove back. Uh, she passed away at the age of 64. Not only was she an award-winning actress, also was an amazing singer uh, as well. Also very much involved uh, in her church uh, in New Jersey, as well as in Delta Sigma Theta. I got a chance to meet her at their convention, I think it was in 2011 when it was in New Orleans. Uh, and so she was very much involved uh, in uh, some of the com community endeavors. Uh, yesterday I had, uh, and last night I had an opportunity to communicate, communicate with a lot of her uh, co-stars, Phyllis Siobhan Stickney, uh, Joe Morton, uh, Inkwell director Maddie Rich, uh, also uh, communicated with just others who just would just shared that Robert Townsend as well. Uh, these are some of the tweets that people put out. Robert Townsend, he and I talked last night. He posted, my heart is full uh, because yesterday I lost my amazing dancing partner on TV for five years, Suzanne Douglas. Uh, we, uh, we did work on the parenthood. I just remember a lot of laughter and a lot of tears. Uh, her regal bright light will be missed. Uh, next up, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith. Uh, she also, uh, I had reached out to Jada last night, talking uh, with her people, letting them know uh, about the passing as well. Because it wasn't actually uh, shared with a lot of folks. So again, her family uh, posted items on Facebook page. She's a Chicago native, was an Illinois State University graduate, and earned a master's in music degree from a Manhattan School of Music, also NAACP Award, Image Award winner uh, for the movie Tap. She also played Sissy Houston, mother Whitney Houston, in the 2015 biopic Whitney's School of Rock. Uh, she also was in various face series. And her last show was, of course, she was in Ava DuVernay's When They See Us, uh, about the Central Park Five. Uh, let's again go back to, uh, here's the uh, tweet uh, from Jada, uh, first of all, from Nisi Nash, RIP Suzanne Douglas. She was not only a class act, but a gentle soul, so talented, grateful for having the chance to work together on When They See Us. Too much fun. Uh, when Kaepernick came to set, uh, take wing queen. Uh, Jada, let's pull up the Jada Pinkett Smith um, uh, tweet as well. Uh, first of all, this is Reagan, Dome, Ga Reagan Gomez. I'm at such a loss. Uh, I was uh, a Philly kid straight off the Greyhound bus uh, who took a lot of things for granted. Uh, watching you work and move gracefully from scene to scene made me love and respect the business. Our talks we had, lots of them. You taught me so much. I will never forget you. Uh, J.D. Pinkett Smith, uh, I woke up this morning uh, to the news that Suzanne Douglas uh, passed away. I worked with Suzanne in the film Inkwell. She was an elegant, uh, gentle, warm spirit. My deepest condolences to her family and loved ones. May she rest in love. Uh, and also, uh, let's see, Viola Davis. Uh, oh man, I remember uh, being at a party with you. Uh, I was just about uh, 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 10 of us. Uh, we talked about, uh, first of all, I'm trying to read this monitor, y'all. Uh, let, let, me, let me just actually pull up Viola's uh, Instagram here. Um, we, got, we got it in very small print, so that's why it's a little hard to see the monitor. Uh, let's see here, Viola. 
And like I say, there are lots. If you, if you actually go to all the social media platforms and type in her hashtag, you will see a lot of the uh, a lot of the posts uh, that have been made uh, with regards uh, to uh, Suzanne Douglas. Uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, is is one of them. Uh, let me just uh, pull it up on my phone here, folks. Viola Davis. All right, here we go. And so this is her post. She said, oh, man, I remember being at a party with you. It was just about 10 of us. We talked about life, race, the world. We laughed, ate, shared. I'm so happy I got to tell you how much I love your work. R.I.P. Beautiful, talented, dancing queen. Uh, as I said, uh, I got a chance to communicate with Joe Morton, who played her husband in the Inkwell. Uh, he talked about how amazing she was as well. Uh, and Phyllis Siobhan Stickney, uh, she and I uh, text earlier, and um, she said this. Um, she said, yes, uh, she is my sister from before Hollywood. I loved her, her spirit, her talent, her style, and grace. No word. Uh, when there would be funeral arrangements for Suzanne Douglas, again, the actress and the singer, passing away at the age of 64. Uh, let me thank uh, our panel. Uh, I appreciate you all being with us. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Bernarda, Kelly, and Faraji. Thank you so very much uh, for a great conversation that we had today. Uh, folks, uh, if you all want to support what we do, uh, we got to create our own platforms to speak to our issues, to celebrate our own, like Suzanne Douglas. Uh, they're likely not going to get the kind of attention on mainstream media, but that's why we do what we do, to show our appreciation. So please do so by joining our Bring the Funk fan club. Our goal is to have 20,000 of you contribute 50 bucks a year, average 50 bucks a year. Four hours and 19 cents a month, 13 cents a day. Uh, you can do so by uh, going to Cash App, dollar sign RM Unfiltered, paypal.me forward slash R Martin Unfiltered, Venmo.com forward slash RM Unfiltered, Zell is rolling at rollingismartin.com or rolling at rollingmartinunfiltered.com. And so there are folks uh, who have given less, the people who have given more. We appreciate every single dollar because it goes a long way uh, to contributing what we do. Tomorrow on the show, we'll be talking about, first of all, before tomorrow's show, tomorrow morning, there's an unveiling of a Crown Act mural here in Washington, D.C. We're going to be live streaming that at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern tomorrow morning. Uh, so be sure to check that out. We'll have coverage of that uh, on the show uh, as well. So looking forward to that. So I'll see y'all tomorrow right here on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Holla! Thank you, everyone.